Tar is not a typical blockbuster movie. It is slow paced and very dialogue heavy. In fact, the first half hour felt more like a podcast than a film. However, it is one of the highest rated films of last year, especially amongst film critics and movie buffs. The dialogue in this film is so rich that there is too much to talk about and digest in one video. So I will only glance over some of the main ideas that I interpreted from this film. The first part of the film feels like a direct message to today's society, especially towards the identity obsessed cancel culture aspect of it. The rest of the film shows Lydia Tarr becoming, in my opinion, unjustly a victim of this mindset. At the beginning of the film, we see Lydia Tarr being interviewed. The presenter is interested in talking about her success in the context of her being a woman. Lydia doesn't like this and questions why we need a different term for a female conductor. She wants her work to be judged based on how good it is and doesn't want it to be categorised based on any characteristics of her identity. In her mind, it's not about her. It doesn't matter if she's a man or a woman. What matters is how good her work is and how it makes people feel. I think this is one of many indications in the film that show us that Lydia is not motivated by selfish or prideful desires, but instead her work is motivated by love and a passion for music. During the interview, Lydia doesn't want to take credit for being able to accomplish what she did as a woman and thinks that if anyone should take credit for this, it should be the women who came before her. She says that there were so many incredible women before her who did the real heavy lifting. I think some viewers did not like this line and felt as though it diminished the problems that women may face when trying to achieve their goals. However, I think that it gives us an important insight into Lydia's way of thinking and shows us what kind of a mindset is needed in order to achieve success. Lydia knows that there will always be people who have had it easier and people who have had it harder. But in order to achieve success, you shouldn't fixate on the injustices that you have had to face, whether they were a consequence of an immoral bias based on your identity or not. She knows that if you want to make it to the top, you need to learn and improve from your setbacks and not fixate on them, however unjust they may seem. During the scene in which Lydia is teaching a lecture, some of the messages and themes surrounding identity and injustice are explored much deeper. Lydia tries to persuade a student that there is a lot of value to be gained from listening to Bach's music, especially if you want to become a conductor. The student, however, refuses to open his mind to Lydia's point of view and eventually is so offended that he abruptly insults Lydia and leaves. Essentially, Lydia makes the point that it does not matter what sins Bach has committed. The value in his music can still be appreciated and used by its listeners. I agree with Lydia. Someone who may be far from morally perfect can still create something powerful which a lot of people can appreciate and relate to. Because at our core, beneath all our physical differences and moral choices, there is a human element we all have in common. This scene made me think of a quote by Malcolm X, who said, I'm for truth, no matter who tells it. Because in a certain sense, in the world of classical music, Bach's work is the truth. It is not the only truth, nor the most important one, but his personal moral life does not matter when we are extracting what is valuable from his work. Essentially, I think one of the biggest messages from this scene and from this film is highlighting the importance of the ability to separate the messenger from the message or the artist from the artwork. I think it is something a lot of people in modern society fail to do and it has led to a sort of witch hunting culture where people are eager to attack the person they disagree with rather than the idea they are expressing. The obvious flaw in this way of thinking is the fact that you can discredit someone you disagree with, however this does not discredit their message. Even if you kill them, this will not kill the idea. If there are people who relate with them, their ideas will live on. This obsession with discrediting someone you disagree with leads to a society where being accused is as bad as being guilty, something that is mentioned in the film and something that Lydia finds out for herself later on. Another interesting line that Lydia says during the scene is, the narcissism of small differences leads to the most boring conformity. The narcissism of small differences was a term used by Sigmund Freud who argued that the more similar people were within a community, the more likely it would be that they would argue over minute differences. Lydia argues that in a society where everyone has the same social political views, there is a boring conformity. In other words, when everyone has the same beliefs and opinions and ideas are not debated upon, we end up with a boring society where everyone is just repeating what everyone else is saying. I think the word boring is an understatement in this case. And, as the film later shows, perhaps the narcissism of small differences leads to a dangerous conformity. Some viewers have stated that the ideas that Lydia expresses in the film are not the ones we should take away and adopt, as Lydia is actually a villain in this story. Ironically, however, that would be missing the point of some of these ideas, especially the ones expressed in her lecture on separating the message from the messenger. The question as to whether Lydia is in fact a villain I don't think is very straightforward, but in order to answer it, I think we need to start right at the core of her motivation. Lydia has a strong love and passion for classical music. This is something which is hinted at many times throughout the film. 
Even after her fall from grace, when she is conducting at a much smaller and less prestigious event in Asia, she still feels the same strong emotions backstage before coming on to perform. This deep love for classical music has been so strong that it has pushed her to single-mindedly pursue the art form with her whole life revolving around her becoming the best conductor she can be. Lydia has been so single-minded in pursuing her goals that, as her wife mentions, nearly every relationship she has ever had has been transactional, meaning Lydia hasn't made any real relationships with anyone and her interactions with people have been strictly business-minded and centred around what is best for her career. Some people may condemn Lydia for this and see her as cold or selfish. However, I would disagree. I think that Lydia is playing by the same rules as everyone else. I don't think she is using anyone else more than they are using her for their own careers and goals. We see Lydia's co-workers acting very friendly to Lydia until they no longer need her or until they don't get what they want from her. Then we see their true colours come out and at best they aren't there for Lydia when she needs them and at worst they spitefully betray her. I think although Lydia's approach is business minded and not based on friendship, at least she is honest about it. The state of the classical music industry portrayed in this film is one in which everyone is selfishly trying to better themselves and their relationships with others are simply to better their own careers. I think this mirrors a lot of industries and businesses in the world today and Lydia's mindset and devotion is one which is needed to become successful as she does in the film. However, as Lydia centred all her energy and devotion towards music, she had no one who she had a true meaningful connection with, as even her wife called their relationship transactional. She began to feel as though something was missing and she began feeling a need for real human affection. This was probably her, how her relationship with Krista started. Up until that point, Lydia had been good at separating business from pleasure. However, as she grew more lonely, she subconsciously craved a real human connection. We can tell by the way Lydia acts that her relationship with Krista ended badly and there was clearly a lot of emotion involved on her part. We could speculate that Lydia had a lot of strong and positive feelings towards Krista but maybe like most people in their line of work their relationship was only transactional from Krista's perspective. Upon coming to this conclusion Lydia was probably heartbroken and angered and she took revenge on Krista by banning her from several orchestras. Fast forward to the present day and we see that Lydia has achieved her goals and she also has a daughter who she loves and genuinely cares for. However, something is still missing from Lydia's life. She can sense it and it's bothering her and this is reflected by her waking up in the middle of the night. Lydia tries to fill the void in her life by creating a relationship with one of her students, Olga. Personally, I don't think that Lydia was motivated in doing so by any lustful or selfish desires, but instead it seemed to me as though Lydia saw herself in Olga and felt a connection with her. Eventually, we see Lydia be betrayed by Francesca and this is the beginning of her downfall. As the ship begins to sink, everyone jumps off in order to save themselves. Ultimately, Lydia loses everything she had without any fair trial and no one stands by her as they don't want to risk their own reputation, as they were only with her for their own benefit. We don't know if Lydia is to blame for Krista's suicide, and we don't know if she did at all behave immorally, and if so, how immoral her actions were. But we see that, in this society, being accused is as bad as being guilty, which is obviously not fair. From a broader perspective, it may seem as though Lydia got her karma for what she did to Krista, but even if this was the case, the dangers of a society where being accused is as bad as being guilty are very clear. They say it is lonely at the top, but we don't realise just how lonely Lydia was until she loses everything she had, and there is not one single person who stands by her. Not even Olga, who she did so much for without anything in return. I think ultimately this is a sad story, and Lydia is someone who knew that something was missing from her life, but couldn't quite work out what it was. I also think that she's a character who shows very well the sacrifice that is needed to be the best, but also her story illustrates how hard it is to stay on top and how fast people will forget about you.